Thank you. Chicago maybe uh, maybe six months ago now and we were we were staying at this hotel and I got into the elevator just to go down to check out and this lady stepped into the elevator a few floors down and she came in with her suitcase and she was wearing this like really oversized duffel coat with the hood up and she had this she had this amazing sort of uh, like sort of swish of grey hair that came out of the hood and when she turned her head inside the hood you couldn't see her face she looked sort of disappear and I just I sort of instinctively said I like your coat and she was like you like this coat I said and she, she turned she disappeared and, and you can see it was a bit of a, just a little bit of a nose sticking out and I was like yeah it's beautiful and it looks really good she said I love this coat and, I was, and it was a gorgeous kind of dark blue it was like a Paddington bear coat. and uh, she said I love this coat and I was like it's great and yeah, it really suits you she said you know I saw this coat in a shop and I thought Fuck it, I'm gonna buy that coat. <laughs> and I'm gonna, I'm gonna live my life. And I, and I was like, wow, I'm, I'm really glad I noticed it. It's, it's, it's good, it really suits you. I was like, thank you. And uh, she, you know, and the elevator went down and we got out and I said, I'll give you a hand with your, with your bags. And uh, as we were walking, she said, for two years, I didn't go outside my house. I ate cereal and I stayed in my pajamas and I watched Oprah. And I saw this coat in a shop window and I said, I'm getting that coat. And here I am visiting my daughter in Chicago. And I was like, oh, where are you from? She said, I'm from New York. And I was like, oh, cool. Uh, she said, where are you from? And I said, I'm from And then she said, what do you do, young man? I said, I'm, like, I'm in a band. And she said, oh, what is called? I like music. And then I said, we'll call this world season. And she said, I've never heard of you. <laughs> I said, I'm in this band called The Frames. I've never heard of you. <laughs> I said, I was in this film called Once and it, it did well. Nope, didn't see it. So, so I sort of, you know, I said, look, you know, we're playing in New York in a few months. Because you know, I, I liked her and she said, you should come on to the heat. She said, yeah, maybe I will. There's no talk of what's your name, what guest list, nothing. It was just like, maybe I'll come. And then she got in the cab. And as she got into the cab, she sort of broke down and it was, it was a very intense moment. She broke down and she said, you know, you have to tell people, you told me you liked my code and that's really important. You gotta speak your mind. When something's on your mind, you gotta say. She said, "My son, my son was in that fucking building," and I immediately knew what she was talking about. And I was like, "Oh God!" And she said, "The morning of the the morning of September 11th, I told, I, I wanted to tell him not to go to work. I had a really weird feeling. I woke up from a bad dream, and he was finishing work. Apparently, he had finished work on the 10th, but was going in on the 11th just to get the stuff." She she said to clear the popcorn out of his drawer. Maybe that's an American saying, I don't know. Because uh, I can't imagine he actually had popcorn that he wanted to clear out. Uh, but, but uh, so, so, so she, apparently he went into work that morning and she, and she, she had a really weird feeling and, then she, and when she got up to ring him, she saw what was going on and she was like, and, she, and then suddenly, two years watching TV, suddenly all kind of clicked and I was like, oh Jesus. Uh, and then I was really glad I noticed her cold. But, but you know, no, in all seriousness. Um, but uh, anyway, so she got in the truck, or she got in the taxi, and she went away, and I was kind of left standing there on the pavements, going, "Wow, it was really intense. It's really, uh, you know." And sometimes, you know, a little, a little interaction like that in an elevator or on the stairs, you'll meet someone, and something will go down, and you'll kind of realize that there's something bigger behind it. So, uh, so that was, you know, so 
that was a story of Lois. So anyway, this, so I'll say this for um, So what happens when the heart just stops? Stops caring for anyone? The hollow in your chest dries up and you stop believing. So what happens when the heart gives up? The body goes on living The blood crawls to a slow and stops And it goes away Well, we've got no one to meet No love we would beseech We only have ourselves to blame For everything well, there was no answer in the dust You know, I'm missing you so much But now you're sleeping And I'm leaving, yeah Empty-handed waiting Time will subside and we'll agree It was a given, yeah Well, there was no standard we could set and the world all it does regret I have to leave you in this state of bereavement You see I'm feeling everything Nothing gets by Well there is this hollow in my chest And this time I won't forget there is no comfort in the eyes that put us always to the test. I can't prepare myself for that, but I'll work it out in time. There is a love that flows between us, ever changing every day. I work myself up to a crawl. Well, I'm not fearing it at all. We have no reason left to stay, and that's why we're leaving. Yeah. Well, there was no answer in the dust And no one out there to trust There is this light that drags us beating more And it's a disappointment I miss her Disappointment. There's a bad bone inside of me 